awesome music with the planes <laughs> fighting in the background. I love it. Drinking AZ, George Lindblom here with Ken Morrison, the beer czar. How you doing, Ken? I'm doing well, thank you. How are awesome. you? Awesome. I'm doing great, thanks. And I've got Duncan Lee sitting in with us as well. How are you doing tonight, Duncan? Any better, and I'd be twins. Right? And <laughs> Brett Hurdle from Hangar 24. How are you doing tonight, Brett? It's fabulous. Good to be here with you guys. Awesome. Thank you. And we'll come back to you here in a minute. Um, Ken? Yeah. Now, I know you went out to the Hangar 24 uh, event. I did. The, I did. It the, was a fabulous, fabulous event. Yeah, I, we were here slaving away over a hot microphone. <laughs> Didn't get a chance to do it. Um, but tell us a little bit about that. Um, it was out at the uh, Commemorative Air Force Museum out in Mesa, out of East Mesa, if anyone's unfamiliar. I think uh, Greenfield. I and live Lindsay. about a mile and a half from Greenfield there. Greenfield and Lindsay, yeah. I think it is. Uh huh. It's just it's Falcon beautiful. Field. It's, yeah, big yeah. Falcon Field. It's beautiful. It's uh, surrounded by citrus trees, and it was that time of year where you get that beautiful kind of orange blossom smell. Driving to, the, I had my window open. I just remember thinking, like, it's what a great place to just be driving through, right? Because I and I'm a, I'm kind of an air, uh, airplane, air, like uh, Air Force history buff as well. Uh -huh. I've been out to that museum a bunch of times, which is one of the reasons I want to go to this event so bad because it was, I just it was one of my favorite places in Arizona, and uh, and then I heard they're going to be like giving out beer and food, right? And I, how could it? You couldn't get any better, really. Right, and so we have this this. This uh, brewery coming out of Redlands, Redlands, California. Yep, I almost Redlands. said Redding, but it's Redlands. Redlands. You get the two confused. Uh, Hangar 24. Tell us a little bit about Hangar 24 and what you guys are all about. Redlands is, uh, as we, d we discussed briefly, uh, it's in, uh, as you go through Palm Springs, Palm Desert on I-10, uh, and you roll down into uh, basically the San Bernardino Valley, um, it's the first town, really, on I-10 that you're right. As, it, as you see the Highway 210, uh, you get the exit right there. That's Redlands. Okay. And um, there's a co it's a college town, uh, so uh, but quaint, quaint, very pretty, very quaint town. Very a lot of citrus orchards, a lot of or uh, orange orchards uh, where we obviously uh, pull our oranges for our orange wheat. So um, very quaint little town, um, literally between the best way to describe it, San Bernardino and Palm Springs, and uh, okay, that's where we're at. And uh, what what size is Hangar 24 that they would have a footprint coming all the way out here in Arizona to, to make a major presence? Well, you know what? Um, they've done some good things in California. They uh, they brewed 35,000 barrels last year, um, and of course we want to. Uh, that's strictly in California. Um, okay. They they opened up Nevada. Um, I don't know exactly uh, when it was. You know, in the last month or so. I think I think Nevada was at the same time frame, a little before. Well, actually, it was significantly before Arizona three weeks ago, but um, basically the, the the volume has been Southern California, uh, Northern California, but um, heavy, heavy into the uh, Inland Empire, uh, into Orange County, and uh, so they hey they, they they it was time to spread their wings a little bit, no pun intended, and uh -huh. uh, here we are in Arizona. And do they have a uh, a brew pub down there? What what's their their presence down there? They have a brewery, obviously, and then they have a uh, a, a bar with all of our products um, that are available to you. Uh, but there's no food, so a brew pub. So a tap no. room. Yeah, a tap yeah. room. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Tap room, exactly. Tap room. Okay. So similar to like Four Peaks Wilson. Yeah, something, something similar yeah, to that. Something similar to that. I think inevitably they'd like to try to do something uh, brew pub-ish in Redlands. Uh, they have a great, great reception, uh, very well received, excuse me, in Redlands and and in the, in the uh, outlying areas. So um, I think inevitably they like to have a brew pub with the food. But you know, you got to kind of crawl before you walk. You can't overextend yourself. So I think inevitably okay. that's something they'd like to do. Well, tell us about the lineup. What what can we expect as Zonies here? What can we expect well, from Hangar 24? Well, yeah, yeah we, we hung our hat. We, we built our brewery on orange wheat. And uh, that's going to be, you know, that's our that's our go-to beer. Which <laughs> that, there you go, that, right there. Uh, I love this beer. It's a yeah. very well. I what it, thank you. And I, what it is, and and you know, being three weeks into this thing, I'm I'm still getting my arms around everything. But I love the style. We use the whole orange in the brewing process. I do. It's I, I like it. It's got that sweet. It's not a sweet orange. It's almost a like a like a sour. When you say the whole orange, orange do they use it's, orange juice? No. Well. Excuse me, eye contest. Um, I, saying, I didn't spit in your face. No, <laughs> no, I just unfortunately have a, some eye issues. Uh, they just use the whole orange, including you know the uh, 
I mean, what is it? The what peel. I, thank you. Thing. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And so you, you get the oils from the peel. Uh, it, 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 it really dulls the sweetness, which in my opinion is what you want. I mean, you want a very, well, for lack of a better term, it's a drier, mm -hmm. less sweet uh, wheat beer. Okay. And if you want to sweeten it up, I guess you could throw an orange in yeah. there. It's, uh, it definitely has some like like a sour bitterness to it, but yeah. in a good way. I'm gonna say like yeah. the, it's a it's it's well, not Ken, a sweet orange. It's a it's more of a like a almost like an unripened orange kind of flavor to it. Well, Zara, I, I haven't I known you it. that long, but can I have a sip of that? <laughs> there you go. Try a sip. All right. I got a tab going. If you'd like to be, I'll happily buy you one. Oh, now you tell me. <laughs> so I have an orange I think, tree. I think Katie would like that a lot. George, did you have uh, one earlier? I have you an did. orange tree. Yeah, please don't insinuate. Mine. It was the first beer I had, and I loved it. You love it. Uh, don't insinuate. It was just a chick beer, though. It's it, it's it's, no, it's, it's, it's it, a very good wheat beer. It's to me, this this dynamo. is a this is a perfect summer beer. Like I even said, it was the first beer I had when I walked into the event, and I was drinking it. And I was talking to the guy who was pouring the tap, and I'm like, I can. I can really see myself drinking a lot of this by the pool or something. I mean, yeah. it, to me, it's just a really good summer, warm weather beer. Because, and I'll, you know, I won't go into great detail. I just, I feel the same way. But just because of the lack of sweetness and there's, you know, it's just all natural uh, flavors from the orange. You're not putting, there's no extract of any kind. So you get a real, you know, I mean, for real true wheat, orange wheat beer. And uh, that's what, I mean, I, I think we're going to have some real success. It might take a little while. Obviously, you got to get the word out. There's a lot of fabulous uh, wheat beers out there, but um, I'm, I'm starting to get some some very positive feedback. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of fabulous wheat beers out there. <laughs> I'm not a wheat beer guy myself. But you know, I, I am in the summer. Yeah. And uh, the winter, my taste completely changed, but in the summer, I'm always looking for a great summer beer. That's pretty. That's good stuff because it's got a little bit of the sourness to yeah. it, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's it's dry. Yeah. Um, so it's not coming across like a blue moon or something where exactly. it's going to leave a cloying taste in your mouth. I think so. Duncan, have you tried it yet? You want to try it? Yeah, let me uh, pass the glass. Around. We're all swapping the spit we, here. This is my uh, very educated opinion. I'm put my pinky out. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. This is riveting radio, it Duncan. Is. It's very effervescent. No. There you um, go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's weedy. Yeah, no, I got nothing. Yes, it's, ladies and gentlemen, it's yeah. weedy. Yeah, yeah, All right, go back to sleep, Duncan. Uh, no, listen, if he needs more oranges, I can give him some. Just come to the house. You know, I got a tree whenever you You and them. me both. It becomes a mess in my backyard. That's right. right. right? So watch out for the worms and you'll be okay. Yeah, exactly. One thing you don't want to do is lemon beer. I tried, I made a lemon beer as a home brewer, as a bored home brewer. Right. Bad. I, I think, I, it's the only beer I ever threw out. I, you could clean the toilets with it. It was like maybe a, maybe, maybe like a toasted lemon beer. Maybe no, it's lemons just all the way around. Bad <laughs> to make beer out of, in my opinion. But um, okay, so we got we got the orange wheat. Yep. We established that. What else can, you got? Can I talk about the the chocolate porter? No, absolutely. That, yeah. that that was the best beer I had the entire night. Really. Porters are one of my favorite styles, but that was. Well, I had that earlier when yeah. I came in. Oh, that's yeah, that's good. a spectacular yeah. beer. I mean, it's, it's just a, a, good it's a smooth. It's, it. it's not overly sweet like a, like a sweet chocolate. You just it's kind of got that raw cocoa kind of flavor to well, it, I, and I just I love it. From what I'm gathering uh, in my three weeks in the job, is it, <laughs> I love our subtlety of our beers. Yes. There's yeah. no in-your-face flavors, which I prefer. Exactly. And, uh, and I think the chocolate porter. It's funny. I was talking to one of the uh, uh, Golden Eagle salesperson people, and uh, he's like. You know, I'm I'm leading with the with 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 the uh, orange weed, and I'm talking about Betty IPA, and I'm talking about the double IPA, and then at the end, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And by the way, I got this this chocolate porter, and all of a sudden, all the handles he's getting are from the chocolate porter. So yeah. I mean, it's like ironic. It's just a, it's a really smooth, drinkable beer. I mean, if you're a fan of porters, it's okay. It's right up there. Moving down the dial, oh. there we got chocolate porter. Chocolate what else porter. We, got? we have a double IPA. Um, it's uh, what uh, kind of hops are they showcasing? Um, we're in the uh, we're with Simcoe Citra. We got the um, so the uh, West Coast citrusy, yeah, very much, very in much your, in your face kind of IPA. Yep. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Kind of, kind of yeah. traditional West Coast. And we're nine nine percent um, uh, by volume, and then uh, the, the the bitter units are off the charts, off the charts. But certainly, do you have that here on tap tonight? That double IPA. The double IPA is, is here. Yes. It's here. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I'm I saw the handle. Of, I'm gonna get one of those. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a it's a very drinkable double. Here I think. at Taste yeah. the Tops. Very drinkable. Here at yes. Taste the Tops. The, yeah. the, the uh, Betty the Betty IPA. Can I? I'll talk about that one too. Yeah. That 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 to me is is a standard IPA. Yeah, it's it was, our session. It's it our was, session. It was, but it was awesome. It was yeah. very flavorful. I would I, Bell's Two Hearted has always been one of my favorite IPAs, and I thought 
Betty IPA was right up there with that. I thought it was a, just a really smooth, very it was hoppy but smooth and drinkable. And I again, it was. Now, one, why it was is it a, called Betty? Is this part of the aeronautical Betty, theme? You, you, you're, I lo- you're right on it. Yeah. Um, part of the whole, ne- uh, absolutely. And the Betty with the, the plane and, and this and that. And uh, it's the first um, female reference we have to any of our of our, our beers. But um, the funny thing about our Betty right now is that we're killing it in California. And we have a little bit of an allocation issue. So we rolled it out in Arizona, and now all of a sudden I'm getting uh, emails that uh, are saying, hey, listen, we need to maybe reel it back a little bit because we have chain authorizations that we need to uh, fulfill. So uh, we are here, but we, we don't know where, how far we're here. So we'll okay. see how it goes. But, right. we, but Betty is going to be in this market. It might be we're here right now. It might be a lull and then back again. Uh, but we need to fulfill some chain obligations in California. But uh, that is our go-to Betty, our, excuse me, our go-to IPA. And I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's I, I, do, I agree. It's, yeah. it's an excellent IPA. Yeah. Thank All right. You. Anything else? We have uh, Venetius, which is a uh, barrel roll uh, item. And I don't know much about it. I'm not going to try to bullshit. Is it? Excuse me. No, yes, you're, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a barrel roll series. We do, uh, you know, obviously four a year. Uh, we have seasonal. We have barrel roll. And it's something that uh, it's nine uh, percent. Is that an old ale? See it again. Is that an old ale or a barley wine or? It's uh, you got me on that. I don't know. Okay, I, I'm not going to try to. All try right. to, I'm not going to try to silver coat it here. Duncan. Well, I just have a question. You know, you're you're new. Absolutely. To this. Yeah. But you're not new to the industry. Correct. So me being, you know, kind of like a reformed Budweiser guy. Right. How do you come into play to where? All of a sudden, now you're representing craft beer versus, you know, PBR for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I That's a valid question. Um, I think it's just maybe it's the contacts that I have in this market that they, they rolled the dice and gave me an opportunity. Um, I was with Tappet Brewing Company, which is out of San Luis Obispo, a small little craft beer company, and uh, did some decent things with them. Um, and uh, with the IPA, which I think was, was a good product. So, you know, I, I think that the reality was that you know, being in the beer business for for almost 14, well, you know, for 20 years, uh, craft beer only, only two and a half, three years. So, um, yeah, they rolled the dice on it, but I, I, I believe they, they just want, they want me to, they want someone that actually can, can move, the, move the needle, uh, knows the people and knows the market. And I've, I've been living here and worked this on-premise market for, for 14 plus years. So you're new, but you're not new. I'm new to the craft industry. Call it, call it three years. Uh, but the beer industry, let's call it to more like yeah, twenty. It's beer, you know. We're not flying a space shuttle here. <laughs> exactly. So don't be. Let's not be hard on ourselves. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. I, I, I expected it. It's all good. Right. So, um, anything else you want to tell us about, you know, Hangar Twenty Four, and well, what what can we expect here in the next three months, six months, year? I think you're going to see a lot of. Uh, uh, I already. I've had conversations with my wholesaler uh, regarding our Hellas, uh, our Hellas lager. Um, it comes in cans. Um, the wholesaler, uh, Golden Eagle, is very excited about, you know, this is one of the bigger can markets, um, uh-huh. I believe. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I know Arizona has been very can friendly. Because we got the lakes. Lakes. Tubing yeah. down the river, uh, all that no, good stuff. Golf courses. I mean, yeah. really, I mean, yeah. a lot of positive things that, to move the needle. And so I sat down with Golden Eagle last week, and they said, let's let's get the lager in the market. It wasn't part of the original rollout, and so I think you'll see the Hellas uh, lager uh, soon, and that'll be in uh, cans and draft. I love uh, a good Hellas, a by good, the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I love that biscuity. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just, I just like that's the lager that I really prefer is a good Hellas. Not a lot of lagers in cans from what, I, yeah. from what I've, been, uh, I, I've researched, and so excited about that. Um, you're going to get, again, the barrel series quarterly. We're going to have that every every quarter. And then our seasonable, we have a, a Belgian uh, summer ale coming. Um, so really, we'll be very proactive. You're going to see awesome. a lot of new things coming. And uh, literally three weeks in the job. I, I mean, we, I think there's 40 SKUs that we potentially produce every year. Uh-huh. And, I'm sorry. And then, uh, so I'm, I've only probably only had I don't know, 15 or 16 of them. So I'm learning as we go. <laughs> In three weeks, as well, you if you need imagine. help with R and D, let us know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'd, I'd be very Heated. willing to, R and, uh, to help with that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Nice. Panel. Yeah, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed all the beers I, had. and I'm not Thank just you. saying that because you're here. I'm not kissing ass. It was, no, it was a it. solid lineup right. of beers I had. It was I'll, excellent. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Ben Cook, who's our owner and uh, the master brewer, is uh, is a passionate guy. Yeah. He's very excited to be in Arizona. Um, we, you know, we've, we've done some great things in Southern California, Northern California. 
this is very important to him and mm-hmm. uh we appreciate the fact that you guys are giving us the opportunity to get our word out, it, and yeah. uh, so actually, we're, we're I, really excited. I got, Arizona's I got a to great meet, market. I got to meet Ben at the event. I was amazed at how how accessible he was, and I mean, just kind of. Yeah. I've been to a lot of those events where you kind of the head, the head guy is kind of tucked behind or like yeah. off the wall. He was just walking. Around. I think I ran into him. He was by himself, and I just ran into him. And he, you sure there wasn't like five or six girls around him? But it, that could have been. You okay. know, I mean, he's <laughs> just I, do it. I was amazed they at how ex- how accessible and how <laughs> how friendly and just he was he was a good guy. And I chatted with him for ten or fifteen minutes. And I awesome. But I really I really appreciated the event. It was, it was a, like I said, it's a this a solid a solid lineup of beers. If you see anything by Hangar Twenty Four, I would recommend it. Yeah, it's exciting stuff, and thank you for coming in. Thank go you. ahead and stay here. Don't okay. don't leave. We're no, gonna no. go ahead and uh, pass it over to the dunk, the dunkmeister over here for our weekly installment of the dunk tank. What do you got for us, man? No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Well, you know, this week I was a little under the weather, so I just did a little more investigation. But um, you know, it's some different cool facts, things that I learned. But I really kind of want to pick uh, the beer czar's brain. You know, when oh, I'm. Boy. When I'm looking at a wheat beer, because honestly, my knowledge of like what a wheat beer should taste like is like jack shit. <laughs> yeah. So the fact <laughs> is, is that you know, like when I'm ordering that, what am I gonna really? Exp- what am I really looking for? Is like a novice and hey, you know, I should order this. What in your opinion? You're a quasi like in general. Yeah, in general. I, I, you know, I think you come to a place like Tops. I think it's always good. They have pretty educated bartenders. Mm-hmm. If you tell them what kind of stuff you like, I like, even if it's even if it is a, like a Blue Moon. Like I really like Blue Moon. Give me something that's maybe similar, but maybe a step up. Right. That to me, I mean, you just talk talk to people because I I can't tell you what you like. Yeah. You know, um, but I can tell you if I know what you like, then I can kind of tell you something that's similar and kind of. You got to take baby steps. You can't go from drinking Bud Light to like a barrel aged. And you know, not o- not only uh, since you mentioned that, not only is is Esau the the bartender over here, a great yep. bartender. He's a certified Cicerone. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah. He's, so yeah. He, he'll help you. Yeah. That, that yeah. that that's my biggest. When I talk to people who they always want recommendations of what beer to get, I'm like, I, I hate giving recommendations because if they don't like what I recommend, then they they question my integrity. So I always say, just kind of like talk to the uh, like the bartenders where you're at, whatever they have on tap, and I and it, to me it just it's and they and they're normally very they 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 enjoy it. They like educating and they well, you don't see, ask them what 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 can that's I go the from thing here? though. Ken, what what that, did you think of the Sunbrew? See this, I like this because it wasn't Sunbrew. It's a Colts, yeah, yeah. Colts style. So Four yeah. Peaks, yeah. it wasn't offensive. It just kind of you know went down real easy, but you know like. The wheat beer, it's like, uh, I don't know yet. You know what I mean? Because maybe my palate isn't as developed. It takes time. So, but, you takes, know. It so takes a little estrogen <laughs> to make that happen. <laughs> yeah. It does. I was going to say, isn't wheat beer, that's pretty easy. It's right beer. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Hey, but like I say, I'm, you know, so it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> you and me both, brother. You and like, me both. <laughs> a lot of things are a work in progress. Um, <laughs> since the last time I saw you, George. Yes, sir. First of all. I hit an Audi. That was not too exciting. So, got in a car accident. An Audi like A-U-D-I? Yeah. Not somebody's belly button? No. Okay. <laughs> so, there goes my Allstate, you know, good driver check okay. twice, so twice a year. Not good. Discount double check. Fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, of course, there's like a... She claimed 600 bucks or something. I think it was because she thought I was handsome. And uh-huh. maybe she wanted me to call her again. I'm not sure. But, you know... That's either here or there. My buddy Brian McKean, you know, right. I went to homebrew. Yeah, homebrew. Yeah. Um, his beer is ready, and his German Pilsner, he married it with dates, and uh, he said that's Freaking better. Freaking Brian, man, that guy has talk about flying in the face of convention. <laughs> this guy, yeah. oh, I'll make a Pilsner and then I'm gonna throw dates in it. Yeah, like, and it's like 4.5 ABV. Yeah. so it's crazy. He's gonna get some to me so I can try that. So that should be pretty good. Brian d- Brian doesn't go BJCP. He does his own thing. He and does. I respect him for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh he's got a lot of talent. So. Yeah. And then just digging around, like I learned that Arizona. Did you know Arizona? <laughs> Arizona's first microbrewery was called. Wait. Oh, we got an Can answer. I answer. Anybody? Dave's Electric. Electric Dave's Brewery. <laughs> was that Bisbee? Was that yes, Bisbee, Bisbee yes. Arizona. Yes. Yes, by Dave Harvin. And the second one was. Wait, but 
And then he sold it to whom? Who did he sell it to? Who did he sell it to? He sold it. You mean who, who has it currently? Yes, who has it currently? Uh, it's um, f- um, uh, like a monster or something like that. Well, yeah. Wild beast or something like that. It's beast. wild beast. James and Amanda Gibson. Beast Brewing? Is it beast s- Brewing. Is that, is that still in Bisbee? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. They yep. took over uh, electric. I don't, I don't get to Bisbee. Often. Electric no. Dave's okay. system. So I thought that was uh, yeah. pretty nifty, you know, digging around. And then the article that I uh, was looking up, which is posted And you know why on... I know that? Because I read Ed Sipos' book, Brewing Arizona. Really? Yeah. Nice. Great book. Well, another great site where I found this other information is ours, which is, of course, at the current production. Uh, right now, for somebody that's a brewery and a restaurant, mm-hmm. is 40,000 barrels a year. Right, and so they're trying to the cap. Uh, the cap is that's yeah the, the cap. cap. Okay. Talking about the cap. So now, um, and there's 31 gallons in a uh, barrel. Right. So basically, what 31 times 40, a lot of beer. Right. But that actually jumped from 09 to present. It actually jumped 20,000 barrels. So it already went up quite a bit. But right now they're trying to make it so it's even bigger. You know, more of a cap, mm-hmm. and still keep the restaurants open, right? Because otherwise, might have some restaurants closed down. You know, so it's kind of like you want to push your beer out, and you want to, you know, show it to the world and share it to the world, but you also want to share all this great food that you sell and pair with it. So I'm going to be following that story. So we're a looking for the more. caps to increase. That's something we all need to push for. And yeah, we need to write our that. write our state senators and everybody, and really maybe. Exactly. Maybe go do a show on the lawn of the state capitol or something like that. Make some protest signs. Yeah. Exactly. Hell no, we won't go. Yeah. Or something. CC Cerveza or something (laughs) like that. Yes. (laughs) So it's, uh, you know, it's limited. Uh, It's checked out a few things this week. Uh, It's a little bit of a cold, so I was down. But still a chance to come out tonight to uh, Tops. Right. And... uh, have some awesome beer, have some great friends, uh, and of course, uh, eat some pizza over uh, Tessio's. Tessio's, good pizza. That is. Absolutely. The best. All right, is the uh, is the tank approaching empty, Duncan? Oh, the tank is, yeah. The tank is so empty that the wife's just going to go to bed. <laughs> so, tank, tank, what, what, TMI. What can I buy you at the bar? What, what sounds good to you for Hangar 24? We're not going to get you wheat beer, but what can we get you? Well, I'm not easy. Do you like porters? <laughs> um, we got a double IPA. I am ready for show? a double IPA. All right. Absolutely. How about a porter? Porter, double IPA. I'm, I I'm recommend taking orders. the chocolate porter. Is, that's yeah, what I had. That's the first beer I had. Chocolate yeah. porter. Awesome. All right. Definitely. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here, and then we're going to go drink right. some beer. Um, All right. Brett, okay, Hurdle, pleasure. Yes. thank you for coming hey, out. I really enjoy it. You guys yeah, are great. and thank I enjoy it. I look much. forward to having a beer with you here in a minute. I look forward to it, too. And Duncan, thank you. Yes. Ken, oh. thank you so much for coming out and being my guest host tonight. Anytime, yeah. anytime. I love and it. Uh, yeah, I'd like to have you out again sometime soon. All right, for everybody and Adam and Katie, this is George from Drinking AZ. Have a great night.